All right, it's Professor Carriage, and we're going to go over the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium math. So the first thing to remember is that it's two separate equations. There's an equation for allele frequency, which is p plus q equals 1, where p is the dominant allele frequency and q is a recessive allele frequency, and 1 represents the total allele frequency in the gene pool, aka 100% of the alleles. Now it gets more complicated than this, but for the purposes of this class and specifically for this lecture, we're only going to cover it like this for Mendelian genetics. So the second equation is for genotype frequency and genotype distribution, and that's p squared plus 2pq plus 2 squared equals 1, where p squared is the number of individuals with homozygous dominant genotypes, 2pq is the number of individuals with heterozygous genotype, and q squared is the number of individuals with homozygous recessive genotype. And in this equation, 1 represents the total distribution of all genotypes in the population. So the first, the things to remember that are, that are important are that the allele frequency equation deals with gene pools, and the genotype distribution equation deals with populations. OK, so we'll talk about frog population genetics, because we were talking about that in class. So we have 100 frogs in a population and two alleles that code for skin color. We have 200 alleles in the gene pool for skin color. So 200 alleles for skin color in this gene pool. The number of dominant big G alleles is unknown, and we represent that with P. The number of little g recessive alleles is unknown, and we represent that with Q. But we know that P plus Q equals 1, 100% of the 200 alleles. Now, there are 100 frogs in the population, and 50 of them are light green. Little g, little g, homozygous recessive genotype represented by Q squared. The other 50 frogs are dark green, and that represents the heterozygous individuals, big G, little g, represented by 2PQ in the equation, plus the homozygous dominant individuals, P squared. So that equation P2, or P, P squared, the, homo, the homozygous dominant, plus 2PQ, the heterozygous, plus Q squared, the homozygous recessive, equals 1, or 100% of the frogs. Okay. So here's how we plug the numbers in. We know that 50 of the 100 frogs are homozygous recessive genotype right, represented by q squared in the equation. So we can do some math to figure out what q is. We can divide 50 by 100, and that gives us 0 0.5. So q squared is 0 0.5. And we take the square root of both sides of this equation, so the square root of 0 0.5 is 0 0.7, rounded from 0 0.7 to 0 0.7, blah, blah, blah. Or we can say that q equals 0 0.7. So if q equals 0 0.7, we know p plus 0 0.7 equals 1. Or we can rephrase that as p equals 1 minus q, or 0 0.7. So we get the answer to that equation. We solve for p, and we get 0 0.3, rounded up from 0 0.29 and continuing numbers. But that gives us. E and Q from the, for the original equation. So the dominant allele frequency represented by P is 0 0.3, and the recessive allele frequency represented by Q is 0 0.7. See how that works. So we're going to take these numbers and we're going to plug them in additionally. So we have 0 0.3 as P, and we have 0 0.7 as Q, and we have uh, p squared in our other equation, and the p squared 
equals 0 0.3 squared, right? Um, and we do that math, and that comes out to 0 0.09. And we have a Q squared. So we take Q, and we square that, uh, and that's equal to Q squared. So we, <laughs> we do that math backwards again, right? And we come out with 0 0.49, but that's rounding. Um, so we're making 0 0.5 because that's, that's where we are. Um, and we have our equation, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. And now we can start to plug things in. So our q squared value is 0 0.09. So we take 0 0.09 and we plug that in and we plug in our 2 and our 0 0.3 and our 0 0.7 for the 2, P, and Q. And then we plug in our 0 0.5 for Q squared. And that equals 1. So let's do the math. And it's zero, the, the middle bracket comes out to 0 0.42, and we have 0 0.09 on one side and 0 0.49, 0 0.5 um, on in the last slot. And so the answer comes out to um, 1, roughly 1, because of the rounding of the, of the uh, square root of 5. Square root of 0.5, I should say. All right. So... Okay, so here are our answers. On the left, you can see our gene pool lens, and we're looking at allele frequencies, and we have, so how many G alleles do we have? Big G, the dominant alleles, in a gene pool of 200 total alleles. Our dominant allele frequency came out to 0 0.3, and so we multiply that by 200 and come out with 60 dominant G alleles. How many recessive little g alleles? Well, we have 200 total in our gene pool, and our recessive allele frequency is 0 0.7, so we multiply that by 200 and we get 140 recessive little g alleles in our gene pool. And you can see 140 and 60 add up to 200. That accounts for the total gene pool. Now, when we talk about individuals on the population level, we look at genotype frequencies, and so how many homozygous dominant individuals in our population. And our population is 100 individuals. So we take the frequency that we derive from p squared, and we get, and we times, we multiply that by the total number of individuals in our population, and we get nine individuals with the dominant homozygous genotype. So how many heterozygous individuals do we have? Well, we take our value 2pq that represents that, and we multiply our uh, p value and our q value and the number 2 <laughs> together, and we get a, a frequency uh, of 0 0.42. So the 0 0.42 heterozygote genotype frequency multiplied by 100 individuals in the population gives us 42 individuals with the heterozygote genotype. And then we, we knew the number of genotypical, or, um, or of, of recessive homozygous genotypical individuals. We knew that number to begin with. This was our only starting point. We knew it to be 50. But if we do the math uh, back because of rounding, we get 0 0.49 and times that by 100, and you get 49 individuals. So there's some rounding, rounding issues that you have to deal with in here, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and this one's kind of messy when you do it to only you know one, de one or two decimal places. So anyway, this is how Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium equations go. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I will. Uh, post some other videos <laughs> of other people going over this topic so that you understand it from other perspectives because it's, you know, it's the same thing, but they'll present it differently than I do. And, and like I said, um, you know, this is a lot of math.
so it's very dense. So it might be helpful to hear multiple perspectives on how uh, how to understand this. Anyway, I will see you in class, and I hope this video helps you.